Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-affirming, welcoming, old Catholic faith community of the Independent Catholic Church of the Americas. I'm also the Chancellor of the New England Diocese of the Church, with parishes in Rehoboth, Massachusetts, in Fall River, Massachusetts, West Warwick, Rhode Island, and down in Connecticut. And we also have ministries to the poor in New Hampshire. And our ministry serves nursing homes in Franklin, Milford, Canton, Walpole, and I visit and bring Eucharist to over 40 shut-ins all over Greater New England, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a reminder that Christ is the Good Shepherd and that a Good Shepherd cares for his sheep. And when one of them is lost, he goes in search of the one because he wants to lose none. The gospel reading is from John. And they are so affirming They affirm God's infinite mercy and love for all of his children. Not just some, but all. Every single human being on the face of the earth is a child of God. And God loves each and every one the same. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. And it has Peter filled with the Holy Spirit telling people that the crippled who he has healed was healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter goes on further to tell the people that Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under the heavens given to mankind by which we will be saved. Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. The second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, and reminds us in the following words. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has yet to be made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purifies themselves just as he is pure. Wow. We will be like Christ, when Christ comes again, if we believe, if we follow them, if we live in accordance with how he taught us. The gospel proclaims what the readings tell us. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the good shepherd. He does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. 
The man runs away because he is hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be but one flock and one shepherd. That's Christ talking. He knows his sheep. And his sheep know him. But there are others who do not know him that he cares for and needs to go after so that there will be but one flock and one shepherd, that shepherd being our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on Almighty God. One flock, one church, not 10, not 12, not 20, not 30, not 40. How many churches are there? I don't know. But the intent was one church. As we pray in the creed, we believe in the one holy Catholic apostolic church. Not the two, not the three, the one. This message is a strong reminder that there is only one church and one head of the church, Jesus Christ. All others are servants of God who have been given the responsibility to care for the flock. Those who believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God sent to bring a new covenant and teach us the way to achieve everlasting life with the Father and the heavenly elect. That's the one church. Sadly, there are some in society that would prevent some people from having a close relationship with God and even refuse to baptize the child just because it was born out of wedlock. <laughs> no, that's not, that's not a figment of my imagination. I know it for a fact. I personally was approached by a mother and a little girl, uh, maybe seven or eight. And the woman asked me, was I a priest? And I said, yes. She said, could you baptize my child? And I looked and I said, well, certainly, but wasn't she baptized? No, the priest refused to baptize her because she was not, I was, she was born out of wedlock. Now, recently, there was a story out of Rome where Pope Francis heard of a case where a bishop, of all things, refused to baptize a child because it was born to a single parent. Pope Francis contacted the parent, brought the parent and the child to Rome, and he personally baptized the child. By doing this, he exemplified the good shepherd. What all clergy are called to be since they are the hands, the feet, the eyes of Almighty God here on earth. John makes it very clear that eventually we will find that God views us all with the same regard an infinite love and accepts and welcomes us into his presence as long as we have lived the great commandments. You all know what that is. You've heard me say it time and time again. When Christ was asked, Rabbi, what is the greatest of commandments? He replied, the first is to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and body. And the second is like unto it. 
Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law, and he ended it with, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, you can find that in Matthew 22, verses 35 through 40. Christ, as the Son of God, came to this earth to shepherd us or guide us on a safe journey to heaven. He did this by clarifying the Old Testament teachings, not setting them aside, but letting us know exactly what God desired from us. In John's Gospel, we read the following. Truly, truly, I say unto you, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. In another part of the Gospel of John, Christ told us, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is one who lays down his life for a sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for my sheep. And there will be only one flock and one shepherd. Christ laid down his life. Four weeks ago, we celebrated Easter Sunday. The Sunday when Christ rose from the dead, conquering death and conquering sin. But before that, he had to go through his passion and death. And what a death it was, the ignominious death of being crucified on a cross. He, as the good shepherd, laid down his life so that we could have everlasting life. John's Gospel confirms that Christ came not for the few, but for the many. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, we are being called by God to open our hearts and minds and free them from man-made prejudices and regulations that discriminate against any of God's children. No law should ever be made that causes any of God's children to be discriminated against, felt different, excluded. We are all God's children. And Christ, as the Good Shepherd, came to show us and guide us and lead us to pasture the everlasting pasture of heaven. That's what he wants for us. We are called to forgive those who discriminate against us because they have not fully opened their eyes to God's inclusive love and are still living in the darkness of ignorance. Brought on by misinterpretation and translation of scripture from the original languages the books were written in. In the Acts of the Apostles 4, verse 12, we are told, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given by mankind by which we must be saved. Just as the people who refused to accept Christ as the promised of the ages and dismissed his call to have mercy and compassion for the poor, the sick, and the aged, and the infirmed, and to reach out to the entire human race with friendship and love, we are called not to follow their example, but to follow the teachings of Christ, to live as Christ taught us. We need to welcome all God's children. 
regardless of their race, their creed, their nationality, their marital situation, their sexual orientation, no matter what, and recognize them as children of God. And therefore, our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We need to remember that Christ founded not many churches or beliefs, but one belief that was handed down to us by the apostles who established the first churches. In Ephesians 4, verses 5 through 6, we read, There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. For it is through him, with him, and in him that we become the chosen children of God, that we gain everlasting life. The good shepherd, Jesus Christ, came to enlighten and guide all of God's children. Jesus would never let any of his sheep be scattered or driven from the flock because of discrimination of any kind. We need to find a way to come together again as one faith, one church, and one family of God. We need to stop all the bickering that has divided God's family and make John 10, 16 become a reality again. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. I close this with the words from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkness, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, my rod and my staff. You comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus Christ is the path, is the way, is the truth, is the light. He is the path to God. His infinite mercy and love is for all people. All you have to do is turn to him. He awaits you. And he will come after you if you but let him and carry you upon his shoulders. That is my most favorite image of the Good Shepherd. Jesus Christ with the sheep wrapped around his shoulders as he carries them back to the flock, the lost sheep. Lost no more because the good shepherd went and searched and found them. May the good Lord bless and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love.
Until we meet again, I am Father Bob Janine, and please visit our website, www.missionstsergius.org, and learn about our ministry, and learn how you can help us. And don't be afraid to send me an email at divinemercyparish at msn.com. Send me your prayer request. Send me your questions. I answer all emails. Pax Sebonum, peace of God be with you. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.